Hello, everyone. I'm Zhao Chuang. Today, we are going to draw the head of Dinocaris viewed from the side. Dinocaris was a very mysterious dinosaur, and we didn't know the specific appearance of its head until recent years. The first time I heard about its appearance was around 2005 to 2006, from the late Mr. Liu Jun Chang. At the time, he was attending a conference in Mongolia and he was one of the first scientists that saw the complete specimen of Dinocaris. He described it as an animal that looked like Hadrosaurus with a hump or a back sail on its back. In the early years, I drew a similar picture based on imagination, but because it was too early, it looked quite different from the one we know today. The exact shape of its head was more exaggerated than I imagined or heard at the time. Dinocaris had a duck-like face with a particularly thick lower jaw. It had a slender head, a thick lower jaw, a narrow upper jaw, and a pair of tiny eyes, very different from traditional ornithomimosaurs. The front of its mouth was like a duck's. When alive, it might have a downward extending beak. It probably preyed on fish because fish scales were found in its stomach. The diet of fish or aquatic plants might make its mouth have evolved into a duck bill shape or a downward curved beak. It had no teeth. When it opened its mouth, we could see that it had zero teeth in its mouth. Probably because it lived in water, its nostrils were facing upward. We also should pay attention to this while drawing. Also, Dinocaris had very small eyes. We know that the eyes of dinosaurs were surrounded by a bony structure called the sclerotic ring, similar to the shutter of a camera. Its sclerotic ring was only with a diameter of 8.5 centimeters. The eyeball size of an animal with a sclerotic ring generally depends on the inner diameter of the sclerotic ring. So although this animal was very large, nearly 10 meters long, the diameter of its eyes might only be about 4 centimeters. When drawing, we should focus on the following points. First, it had a duck-like mouth and thick chin. Its jugal bones were curved downward. When drawing the corners of its mouth, we have to pay attention to this curve. In addition, its nostrils were facing upwards, and its eyes were very small. Now, let's start to draw the head of Dinocaris. First, we determine its length. Its head was slender, and we should keep it within the picture. So we put the front of its mouth here, and the back of its head about here. Let's start with this eye. Dinocaris differentiated from other dinosaurs by the position of its eyes, which were located to the rear and upper part of the head, probably here. We draw a relatively round shape, and then the pupil inside. Although its skull was relatively large, its eyes were very small in a shape of round. Its head was about one meter long, while its eyes were only a few centimeters in diameter, which were quite tiny. Then, we draw a brow-like bone above the eye. It had softer lids around its eyes. Next, we draw its mouth. Before drawing, we need to know that, when its mouth was closed, the shape of this scene was complicated. First, the end of its mouth began from its jugal bones. Its jugal bones were relatively downward, roughly below the eyes. Then we move up and forward, its mouth was over its jugal bones, arched upward like this. Then we extend the line forward. The front of its mouth was similar to a duck's bill, and according to the fossils, this part is slightly bulged outward. When it was alive, there might be a keratinous beak growing along the bottom, like the shape I am drawing. Its beak was somewhat similar to that of Hadrosaurus, usually with some downward texture. Then, we draw its nose. From the nose to the top of the head was basically a straight line. Viewed from the fossils, its nostrils are probably here. 
we use dotted lines to show its narrow and long scope. Unlike other dinosaurs, the opening of its nostrils might be in a higher position. Research in recent years has shown that Dinocaris was quite good at swimming. It might live in water like a hippo, so the nostrils were positioned higher. Then, we draw the ant orbital fenestra. Many dinosaurs had the ant orbital fenestra, and Dinocaris had them relatively backward, and slightly smaller, probably here. We also draw it with dotted lines. Then, we go back to refine the top of the eyebrow and make it clearer. Next, we move to draw its lower jaw. Dinocaris had a very special lower jaw, very thick, even thicker than its upper jaw. From here to the rear, about here, it was thicker than the upper jaw. At the front of the mouth, there was a small beak that matched the upper beak. We draw some lines on the beak to show the hardness. Next, we add some details. Draw some wrinkles at the corner of the mouth. As being squeezed, there were some wrinkles on the lower jaw. Because this part was relatively soft, like many modern birds, such as geese and ducks, we can also draw some wrinkles on the edges of the beak, as well as the upper jaw. Draw some muscles at the rear of the face, since it was thicker here. Use these dotted lines to draw the muscles. Then, draw some textures on the chin to show the thickness. Behind the eyes, at this position, we draw the back half of the temporal fenestra. Then draw one ear here. Now, we draw its neck. There might be some very short fine hairs on the top of its head and its neck, so when drawing the back half of the neck, we can draw more fine hairs. The neck was curved. We know it preyed on fish in the water because fish scales were found in its stomach. It was a bit like today's waterfowl, and we draw the throat sac just below its throat. Finally, draw some muscles and wrinkles on the top of the neck. We can slightly show the boundary between the feathers and skin on the neck. Good, like this, we finish drawing the side view of Dinocaris head.